So we have a number of deciduous and evergreen trees, so trees that lose their leaves and don't. Um, this tree here is a deciduous tree. Does anybody know what this tree is yeah, called? Mm -hmm. Birch. Birch? No. Aspen. Aspen. It's an aspen. aspen. Yeah, this is a trembling aspen. Oh. Um, so it's uh, <laughs> there's two different types of uh, trees similar to this. There's the black poplar mm -hmm. and then the trembling aspen. And I'll point out a black trembling poplar as aspen. well. The trembling aspens are, they get their name because if you look at the leaves, they're really uh, round leaves oh. with really long stems. So even with the littlest of wind, like right now there's barely any wind and you can see them trembling. It's because of the, the long stem on their leaves. Uh, something cool about this tree, um, these trees, uh, if you look around in the forest here, these trees are all interconnected because uh, they grow from their roots. Um, so what will happen is one tree will go down and it'll grow and it'll get a, it'll get a shoot out of the root and it'll grow. So they're all considered one organism here. They're all probably one organism and what that does is it means that they're very very uh, uh, strong uh, and uh, in terms of against forest fires. So if there's a forest fire that comes around a lot of times these are the trees that will remain because if some die others that are still part of the same organism will stay alive and they'll support each other and then they'll be the the first trees that kind of come back after a forest fire. <laughs> um, something really cool about this one, if you notice on the bark, when I rub the bark here, see how there's a white powder? Mm -hmm. White powder, can anybody think of what that would be used for? No. That's the tree's natural sunblock. Oh. Yeah, so if it didn't have, it, it's kind of a natural sunblock. It's for makeup. Yeah, this is like an, about an SPF 2. So you know how you have an SPF 60? This is about an SPF 2. So you can rub it off and it gives that powder. Mm -hmm. And this, a really, really cool fact about the poplars. Poplars. This, the poplar in the Guinness Book of World Records, the poplar grove, there's a poplar grove in Utah. That's the largest organism in the world. Wow. Yeah, that's classified as the lot because it's all connected, one forest. Mm. So this is aspen. Trembling aspen. Trembling aspen. Yes, yeah. the leaves move like that. Yeah, and it's it's mm -hmm. yeah. And and th that's aspen too, but that uh, it doesn't have that powder. Is that what no, it is? this is just an older one. Okay. See how it grows up with the the bark. Oh, I this see. one's younger. So down here, you'll see the ah. bark here. As they grow older, yeah. they'll have uh, the bark that goes up, and it's ah. a little rougher. So right now, it could even be mistaken for. Uh, Birch. A little bit. Little I'll show you. A, I'll show you the birch. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. I if I see one, and the, they're they're a little different. You can tell yeah, the, yeah. the size, and they're a little bit different. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. So there's the white birch. That's the paper birch, and then there's the aspen. I'll try and find another one that's uh, that's alive still, and I can talk a little bit more about it. Okay. Um, and they grow up like this, so they look like this. Hi. So this okay. is a dead one. Huh. So, so these are the big leaves here. Um, as it grows, that's it's called cow parsnip. And then when it die, when it's dead, uh, you'll find these ones here. And the stalk is like is uh, is very uh, hard, and it's hollow. Mm -hmm. So you can see it on the in the in the hollow. Bamboo. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty uh, crisp, yeah. like crispy. It's not super strong, yeah. mm -hmm. but you can make uh, moose whistles and deer whistles out of these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, growing up as a kid, I used to make pea shooters yeah. uh, mm -hmm. with my brother and stuff. We'd 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 uh, make whistles and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but that's cow parsnip. One cool thing: this this plant is edible. You can eat the leaves of it. On this one, it's edible. Uh, and the leaves are really good for uh, for digestion problems. If you have a sore stomach or diarrhea, you can eat the leaves on this one. <laughs> That's cow parsnip. If you guys want to see. Yeah. It's an aspen. This is an aspen tree. Uh, can anybody guess what's happened here? <laughs> no, it's... it's it's been eaten. Oh. Yeah, so this here, if you look at the trees, we'll probably see a few other areas. This one's old, old. Um, but if you look at other trees, um, as we go, you'll notice that, um, that it'll have a, a part of the bark ripped off. What do you think ate that? The moose? This would be moose. Moose? Yeah, moose will, moose will come and they'll chew on the, they'll chew on the bark, barks of this tree. Um, there, there's two at moose, deer, and uh, porcupines. Those are the animals that'll that'll eat the eat the bark off the, the branches. Um, if it's right on the edge of a trail like this, it's uh, it's most definitely a moose. They'll just come and they'll just chew on it, uh, and they like to do things. Moose like to be very uh, aggressive around here. Uh, the male moose, what they do is they uh, they during the rut they'll get their their horns in the branches and the leaves, and they'll just try and get as much junk on their leaves as, or the, on their horns as possible. Because it attracts the ladies, it's like their, like their jewelry and stuff. Um, but what they also like to do is, if you notice, we have uh, trail signs. We have trail signs with maps on the intersection. The moose will always go and push those over. They're pests. They like to push over all of our signs and everything just to show that they're strong. Oh, wow. So there's the two different. This here is the. It's called paper birch because if you grab it. You can see it. So this here is just like paper. It comes off as paper. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the Aboriginals in this area, or all over the world, would use paper birch to make birch bark canoes. Oh, so wow. they would uh, cut it down, and they take. If you, if I pull in deeper, it's uh, it's not so so light. Mm -hmm. It's a solid, and they would take that and make birch bark canoes uh, that were really light, and uh, and they float really well. They would also use it to write on. Okay. Um, if you take it off, it's, uh, it doesn't harm the tree if you peel off the pieces that are already curling. But mm -hmm. if I'm to go and to pull off, uh, it actually makes an open wound on the tree. And uh, bug, that's where bugs and insects will come in and damage this one. Mm -hmm. This one's actually not doing so well mm -hmm. down low, but up high, it's, the leaves are strong mm -hmm. up high. Um, these trees are also very, very good for lighting fires. Okay, uh, I can take this and use this as a fire starter to light the fire. And the dead branches that are down here are really, really good. Uh, it's a really nice dry wood and it's really good for starting fires. So that's the paper bird. I'll run out of interpret near the end of the program. But this here, um, <laughs> we have a ton of this. This is all stinging nettle. So have you guys have heard of uh, like poison ivy or poison oak? Yeah, there's no poison ivy in Alberta, or even really. Is there poison ivy in BC? Uh, so. Not that I know of. Yeah, there's poison oak in Ontario, like east. This is stinging nettle. This is kind of what if somebody says, "Oh, I got poison ivy" or something. In Alberta, this is what they're talking about. Uh, these, uh, this, this nettle, and what it does, it has a, 
it has little fibers on the bottom of the leaves that cause the reaction. It's like a little uh, a bug bite. It's like a little mosquito bite that you would ha you'd have. You get a little rash and it just itches. It doesn't, uh, it's just because the, the nettle's in there and your it creates a little reaction to your body. But this stuff, this plant is actually edible. Um, so you can pick it, you can brew it like in a tea, you can boil it and eat it. Um, it's actually quite healthy for you. It helps with digestion. Uh, so it's, it's really, really, really yeah. good that way. <laughs> Another cool thing with this, that's my favorite thing with this, in the winter time, this will still be like this. It'll just be all dead leaves, but it'll be poking out of the snow. You can just grab it with your hands and pull off all the leaves and it's not, it won't sting you. But if you go into the bark, so if you go into the, if you kind of peel open the bark, and go inside, you'll see uh, it's almost like silk, the silk fibers. And you can take that silk out and you braid it together and it makes a very, very fine thread or string, but it's extremely strong. It's like silk. It's as strong as silk. If you've ever tried to pull silk apart, it's very strong. This is that strong as well. So it's a really good, cool way. I've done it. It's one of my favorite things to do is you make string out of it because it's really long. Uh, when you pull the whole stalk, you can make a really long thread like that just by braiding it together. And then you can braid those threads together and make a really strong rope. And it's really, really oh, cool. Um, and yeah. we've tested, I've, my buddies and I have joked or like tried to break it and do all that kind of stuff. And it's very strong. Rose hips. Mm -hmm. Can you? Yeah, yeah. So, these are what? Rose they're here? very good. Yeah, Buddy. they're really good tonight. Yeah, so yeah. this one here. So these here are the, everybody was already saying, these are the rose hips. Mm -hmm. This one here is the prickly rose. There's two types in Alberta. There's the, there's the wild rose and then the prickly rose. Um, and if with these ones, the, the prickly rose, um, the hips are a little uh, more oval shaped. Whereas the wild rose, they're very round, mm -hmm. big and round. The, the prickly rose will be more oval shaped. Mm -hmm. And um, as they go with these, so these, the rose hips are actually, they're one of the coolest things. Like it's the Alberta rose. It has a, a, a pink flower on it. Uh, and it's actually the provincial, provincial flower of Alberta. And it's on all the license plates, um, but it has a pink flower to it and you can actually eat the flower petals. Yeah. Um, I, I love doing it all the time. My girls like doing it. Uh, it kind of, it tastes like perfume. Uh, not that perfume tastes good, but it, 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 ta it's, it tastes like perfume smells really. You eat it, you eat the pink, the pink petals and they taste really good. Good on tea as well. Yep. Freaking tea. Oh yeah. But, and then with these rose hips, um, another name for them is uh, prickly bumberry. Um, Cause if you go, <laughs> and you open it up, see how it has those seeds in it? Yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. those so, seeds, um, I refer to them like they're, they're more like um, fiberglass. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at them, they have really, really like thin hairs on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, the Aboriginals call it prick prickly bumberry because if you ate them, um, you, as, you, as you pooed it out, it would make you, give you an, an itchy butt. <laughs> um, so that's the, the prickly bumberry, but with these, uh, these, uh, these rose hips, they're really, um, they're really, really high in vitamin C. So two of these have about the same amount of vitamin C as one orange. Yeah. And so what you can do is, uh, is instead you can just pick off the skin and then just eat the skin. And it's really, really high in vitamin C. Mm -hmm. But you have to eat it a certain time of year. Like right now is okay. Uh, it's either when they're orange, like bright orange or bright red. That's oh. when you'd want to eat it. Mm -hmm. So can you make jam, um, a jam with these as well? I've never heard of making a jam. I've seen it. Rose have you? Rose jelly, rose hip jelly. Mm, okay. Yeah. And I wonder it because like I have the round orange? one. <laughs> What's that? It tastes like orange. No. 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 A different? It tastes... <laughs> yeah, you could try it. Just uh, if you want to try it, it turns your fingers orange. I can take it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can try it out. 
This plant here, I just wanted to talk talk quickly about. It's got some good some good mythology to it uh, in terms of in terms of what it is. This one, it's called meadow rue. Um, so you can tell it looks like little uh, shamrock. Shamrock. Well, sort of like a shamrock. I always, I always. It looks like a little cat paw. Uh, it's a cat paw print. Uh, that's uh, that's meadow rue. And uh, you can make a tea out of this as well. Um, and it, but the the history behind it, the uh, the cool history is it's uh, the mythology behind it is if you're uh, quite taken aback by somebody or. Uh, you want them to fall in love with you. Uh, <laughs> what you do is you you, uh, you give meadow root meadow root to somebody, and supposedly they will fall madly in love with you. Oh. Um, so the Aboriginals, the the females would would wear this in their hair, yeah. and they would make bouquets and stuff to try and get the men to fall in love with them. And they would they would or the men would give this to uh, to them as they as they and it would be a. Uh, it would be a sign of their love. So that's, that's meadow root. I don't know. I'm scared to try. Highest areas of the park. Oh, highest. Um, so, so as you go along, um, we're actually in the uh, the area around here is called the Beaver Hills, uh, and we've actually just been uh, designated as a biosphere reserve. Has anybody heard of that term before, the biosphere yes. reserve? There's, uh, there's 18 different biospheres in Canada, and there's uh, 678 biospheres in the world, in 100, 120 different countries. Yeah. And what it is, it's uh, to be designated a biosphere, you, uh, it's just all about um, protecting the land and the resources that are in there. So it's not like... Uh, like we're part of the biosphere here, and it includes the refineries. It includes all the. It includes the the county of Sherwood Park. It includes all those the urban areas, as well as the as the natural areas inside of it. Um, so this is yeah. This is the Beaver Hills Biosphere Reserve. And one of the cool things about us is um, in the land here. Uh, why it's called the Beaver Hills is because the area has the. The knob and kettle. It's referred to the knob and kettle areas. So if you looked at us on a map, we would have there's there's little ponds and lakes all over the place, uh, and the, and that's kind of the knob and kettle area. The knob is the top of the hills. The kettle is the the smaller ponds. And right now here's we're on a, on a really good knob. And if going this way, I it was you can't really see it because of the leaves. It's a it's a nice nice karst that goes all along there, uh, on like a upper hill. And what we've done with our park is all of our trails kind of follow the knob, uh, the knobs around the around the park, and then there'll be the the kettles with all the the natural trees and stuff. Um, so that's yeah. This is one of the highest areas. The highest area or where the Beaver Hills kind of starts is if you go. Did you guys come in on Highway 16? Yeah. On the, the main highway? Yeah. Yeah, if you go uh, on Highway 16 on the left, there'll be a Temple gas station. Uh, that's kind of a big hill. That's the start of the Beaver Hills. Okay. okay. That's where the start of the Beaver Hills starts. And right on the edge of that, back in the day, that was the start of Lake Edmonton. Um, all of Edmonton and that whole area used to be a lake. And that, that hill there was the start of Lake Edmonton. So now it's uh, but now it's just a hill on the highway. <laughs> so yeah, this is one of our campsites here, and uh, just wanted to 
bring us up here to talk about the higher elevations and stuff that you see. Uh, it's actually, you can see a cool area over there, uh, just to kind of look at the forest. Thank you. Ah. Yes, it sounds nice too. So this tree here, does everybody see this one? Yeah. Okay. There's, uh, there's two trees in the park that, that look like this. One of them will have a leaf that looks more like a maple leaf almost. It's got the three, uh, mm -hmm. three parts, almost like a, uh, that's a cranberry. There's a high bush cranberry. cranberry that looks more like a maple leaf. This one. This one with, uh, there's one here that is low. Yeah, I want to get some of the berries. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. So this one here is a pin cherry. So it's like a high bush cranberry and it's a pin cherry. So you can eat these. Um, they're very bitter. <laughs> Very bitter. Um, but you can make pin cherry jelly uh, and just grab it. You can make uh, it's like cranberry juice, all that kind of thing. You get a large bucket full and you can just get the juice from it and then add sugar and water and it makes it really nice. This one, it's called the pin cherry because the, the leaf is just a long narrow leaf. So I like to think of that as a pin. And then the high bush cranberry looks, it's the three, uh, three pointed leaf. Yeah. So that's the pin cherry. They've got seeds in them, so you can kind of just chew on it and then spit it out. Um, yeah, but feel, uh, feel free to try it. Yeah, it's very bitter. I just, if you have any allergies, don't go around eating a bunch of stuff because you don't know if you'll react to it or not. But, but that's the pin cherry. Uh, and right now is the, actually the time to pick all the pin cherries and the cranberries. In the fall, they'll, you'll start noticing the, the high bush cranberries and the pin cherries to be very bright. So how is everybody doing in terms of their energy levels and stuff? You good to good? Good? Okay, well, so we'll head down. I think we'll head down this way and do a, another walk and then head to head back. If everybody's feeling good with energy levels and stuff. Sure. This plant right here. Um, you can see it kind of looks like a rose, pet rose leaf, the wild rose, but this one doesn't have any prickles on it. It's, it's really green and soft. Um, this is a vetch. Uh, so in the springtime, it'll have a purple flower on it. Um, this is the American vetch. And this one's edible as well. Uh, you can make a tea out of this as well with the, wow. the vetch. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the vetch there. And you'll see it. They're good for your digestion. Uh, they help kind of help prevent diarrhea and all that kind of thing. But um, what they actually used to do is if you chew it up and kind of make a paste out of it, you can put it on your wounds and it helps, uh, helps heal mm -hmm. with healing. With the healing, that's the plantain. Yeah. Are these edible too? Or actually, I wouldn't eat this one. Well, these are not Saskatoons. Don't take my word for it. This isn't a Saskatoon bush. <laughs> Something else. Yeah, I think it. I think it's an alder. Elderberry? Yeah. yeah. But I don't eat this one, they're not Saskatoons. Oh, but elderberry is edible too. Oh, these leaves, it's a, this is actually a parasite that caused them to, cause them to go like that. I, I, and I think those ones are edible, but I don't wow. want to say for sure. No, no. Don't touch it. No touch it, but they're free. And that one's not edible. Oh. Yeah, so it looks like a, a nice berry, but it's not edible at all. So that would be one that you'd, you'd watch out for. They look like they'd be edible, but they're not.
मूस आ गया वो ये अपने ये कम्युनिटी सेंटर नहीं है पूरे बंद when when the leaves turn purple you can pick it and you get about uh, three quarters of a ziploc bag full mm -hmm. and you can brew a pot of tea mm -hmm. and it's a really 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 relaxing tea um, so it, it actually has a I wouldn't say it gets you stoned or anything like that, but you drink it and it and it just really very very relaxing tea. What is it called? Bunchberry. Bunchberry. This one right here. And it, in the in the in the fall, it'll turn purple. The leaves will be a, a maroony purple, and you pick them when they're purple, and it makes a really really good tea. That's never mind. That's still a trembling aspen. <laughs> I was gonna say it was a black poplar, but it's not. It's still the same one. Still trembling aspen, just an older one. I don't know if you're going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go I heard no. 